SBS Radio, broadcasting in Slovenian. SBS Radio odaja u slovenskem jeziku. Dobro jutro in lepo pozdravljeni torkovi slovenski odaji na Narodnom omrežju Avstralije na digitalnem radiju kot tudi po svetu preko spletne strani SBS Radija. Lep jutrni pozdrav vam iz Sidnejskega studija pošilja Tanja Smrdelj. Želimo vam prijetno poslušanje slovenske besede. Ko vidite, kaj delamo mi v studiju, da nas vidite, ker ponavadi na vdaj pač samo nas slišite. Uh, tako da vidite, kakšen zgleda naš, uh, naš studija. Tukaj miza, tukaj imamo računalnik, tukaj CD, vse drugo, kar rabimo, seveda telefon, se na voljo, tudi mikrofon, seveda naj, najpomembnejši. Uh, in tako vas vse, vse seveda lepo pozdravljamo, da pridete dol, da nas obiskujete tudi, kdaj bomo imeli tudi kakšna odporta vrata. We're interviewing Tanya Smadel at the SBS Radio Studio in Sydney. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, you're a very active member in the Slovenian community in Australia, and your voice is well known as a presenter on the SBS Slovenian radio program, for which you're also the executive producer. The first question is, uh, where were you born, raised and educated? First, I'd like to welcome all of you guys for coming in. Uh, it's, uh, I guess, uh, hard to get people here on a Sunday morning, particularly, uh, into the studio, but... Uh, I was born uh, in Sydney, in Western Sydney, uh, in Blacktown, uh, raised out in the West, uh, near uh, the Slovenian church in Greystone. So I sort of grew up uh, quite actively in the community, going to church. I went to Slomčkovašola there as a child in primary school, um, and also went to uh, the high school, Slovenian high school, on a Saturday morning. So every Saturday morning I gave up my time for six years to learn Slovenian. Um, so that's, I guess, how I was born and raised, and also involving myself in the community uh, at an early age uh, through the folkloric uh, dance groups, um, then later on through the drama group, uh, which we're sort of still in, but we're not active uh, at the moment, um, and then sort of found my way through to uh, radio. Okay. And I'm guessing your parents are Slovenian? Yes, mum and dad are both Slovenian, uh, okay. from around the uh, area of Pilka, which is near Postojna, yeah. so around, I guess, North Renska area. Uh, so I've been there quite a few times. Uh, I think I've been there about eight or nine times now mm-hmm. uh, in Slovenia and obviously uh, very close with the family there, a lot of friends and obviously a lot of radio contacts that we deal with on a regular basis. So I have pretty much been to almost every corner of Slovenia at this point. Um, but yeah, we enjoy it. Uh, this, I mean, the radio is the kind of medium where we're only here a couple of times a week on radio because we only have two programs a week on a Tuesday and a Sunday and from eight till nine. The Tuesday, I guess, you know, everyone will be familiar with outside of Sydney and Melbourne because uh, it goes national. Sydney and Melbourne uh, is only on a Sunday. Uh, that's local, uh, a bit more, I guess, the local news and you know, local themes of what's going on in the communities in both Melbourne and Sydney. Um, and, you know, we have 68 language groups in SBS. So quite a few people come through here uh, every week. And some people you'll see, some people you won't see for a while, depending on what days they work. Okay. Uh, you've mentioned you've been like pretty much everywhere in Slovenia. Uh, where's your favourite place? Ooh, tough question. Um, I'm going to say I think my most favourite place, or probably the two most favourite places, would one would be Borkin, mm-hmm. and the other one would be Škotsjanska Um I mean, I've been to Postojanska Jama as well, but I think Škotsjanska is a little bit nicer for my, my taste because it's not as commercialised. You don't have as many people coming through. Okay, you don't have the train going through to, to make it easier on the, on the way through, but um, I think it's a bit more of that, you know, that climbing up and down in the various sections and you see a little bit more of the natural 
um, caves there, I think, than you do in Pustoyansk, as much as we love Pustoyansk Yama as well. Uh, what is it about Slovenian culture that you would like the uh, second and third generation Australian Slovenians to um, be passionate about? Ooh, um, I guess I'm not as cultural probably as I'd like to be, um, but, you know, I mean, there is so much literature and history uh, in, in, in culture and in Slovenia because, I guess, until the last 20 years, we've always been under someone else's rule. Mm -hmm. So we've had to make, I guess, Slovenian culture our own and not to you know, to try and take everyone else's ideas and, and whatever else is going on. But you, if you look two or three hundred years back, where you've got in a classic case of Franz Eberschirden, um, you know, in 19, 1800, you know, 1849, you know, he wrote all this literature that just has such a huge meaning, um, even, you know, 200, 250 years later, um, you know, and I guess that, that culture, and particularly things like Pust, you know, all those carnivals, or the, the particular traditions that we have in Slovenia, and obviously that we bring here to Australia, that we still celebrate, um, you know, is a big part of the community, a celebration, basically, to, to say, yes, we, you know, we all come together for certain events. Uh, it might, might not be every, every week, but it might be, you know, four or five times a year. Uh, you know, particularly, obviously, Puss comes to mind because it was last weekend. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was, there were, you know every, uh, you know, organisation in, in Sydney and Melbourne, at least, have, have their own Puss, you know, dance, and, and they dress up and, you know, have a, a bit of, you know, traditional uh, food and everything else to go along with it. How did you originally become involved in the Slovenian SBS radio program? Okay, uh, yeah, I got involved when I was in high school, uh, in uh, at Slovenian school. Uh, the car the teacher at the time, Marisa Lichan, took the year eleven and twelve class I had for two years, uh, and at the end, as tradition was for every year before that, every everyone in the year twelve class, when they were about to graduate, had to do a piece for radio. You know, four or five minutes on any topic you wanted to do could be about yourself or a specific topic, you know, so I, like everybody else, had done that, uh, and basically from that point on, uh, after we graduated, uh, Marisa came to me and said, oh, do you want to do a piece or a segment, you know, here and there, um, so I was sort of fine as a, as a youth segment, so over the, probably the next two or three years, I sort of did little segments, once a month, mostly recorded, so it wasn't live, so you didn't have all that fear and, and the shaking going on when you're going live on air. Uh, so we recorded as many times as we need to, or more times than I wanted to, usually, because Marisa was a perfectionist and she wanted things exactly right. Mm -hmm. So I usually had to do things five or six times. But yeah, then at about, uh, I think it was about 99 or so, um, then I started doing a bit more involvement. I came into the studio and did my segment live, which was not a good thing to do. You know, he's very shaking, headphones on, and, and it was, yeah, very traumatic, I guess, the first time. But, you know, sort of got used to that and, and did some other segments and did more and more of the program, started to learn how to put the program together. In these days, obviously, it's, you know, we're talking, you know, 12 or 13 years ago, the technology wasn't like it is today. So it was a lot harder. We still had reel-to-reels. Um, so, so editing those kinds of things was a lot more difficult than it is now. But that's sort of how I got involved. And then uh, she, you know, when she became ill... She was looking for someone else sort of to help her out and sort of to, you know, she had a, you know, she had a few people already, but uh, someone, I guess, of the second generation to try and, and learn a bit more about radio and how we put things together. And that's when I applied for a casual position um, and did, I think, my first program in about 2000. Uh, it would have been April or May 2000. Uh, I had to have the tape somewhere. <laughs> um, and uh, it went from there and pretty much, you know, learned more and more of the program. We did programs together, sort of took over the reins of how to put it together, what was a good quality show. Um, and then when, you know, when she passed away in 2001, late 2001, you know, started, became the, the sole representative for Sydney uh, at that point, and then continued to coordinate with Melbourne, because I had Melbourne people at the time, and we still do, uh, and in back in 2008, I think it was, um, became the executive producer um, in charge of the show, pretty much. Um, we still have two people, as everyone would hear regularly in Melbourne, Pavel Shrey and Lenti Lenka, so between the three of us, all three second generation, um, we produce the shows every week, so, yeah. Obviously, you're a part of SBS Radio and an active member of the Slovenian community. Now, you've previously mentioned some of the um, activities you did back in high school in terms of the uh, Slovenian aspect of your life. Are there any other organisations you care to mention that you're a part of? Um, not so much a part of, I guess, the other things as much as I used to be and as much I probably would like to be as well. But um, I guess in the last sort of five or six years um, with the, uh, I guess, starting of, of Hasa New South Wales, uh, Historical Archives for Slovenian Australians, was involved in that at the outset, at the beginning. Um, and then I think in about two years after it sort of formed, I uh, was the president, I think, for a year or two. 
um, and then obviously still involved in terms of active uh, member of, of the committee at the moment um, to make sure obviously we still keep that future and make, make sure we keep archiving things you know even these bits of paper today you know I mean they don't mean much today because they're, you know, they're news or whatever else they are and running sheets mm -hmm. but they do form part of history and how SBS you know is formed and what we do on a week-to-week on -week basis so I guess that's a really important uh, organizations to have to make sure we keep that future for future generations and we tell them what we were doing in those days you know because in that Got, we don't even know what the technology will be in those days, but we can say, look, we used to do this or we used to do this. They can see out, outtakes on videos, they can see pictures, they can see you know, who these people were and their possible ancestors as well. So I think it's really important to, um, to keep that going. How long has the SBS program actually been going? We've been here from the beginning, actually, in 1975. Okay. So it's been a quite a long time. Slovenian program was one of the, I think, first seven or eight that were actually on the air at the time. So Italians, Greeks, and other, you know, Croatians, Serbians were at the same time. We all started at the same time. Um, so we've been around for quite a long time. You know, in those days it was, they started out to have, I think, a two or three month uh, test period to see how it would work because this was new. There was no other radio station that had, you know, an, an ethnic kind of feel about it. So they tried it as a two or three month project and it worked well. It had a lot of listeners, a lot of people, so they continued. And then that was 2EA in Sydney and 3EA in Melbourne. And then, you know, in about the, I think, mid-80s, when they got to SBS television, I think came in the early 80s, around 1980, then they decided to, you know, to group them together under the one banner of SBS, TV and radio. Um, and we became a national program in about 94, when they started going around the country as well. So every time, every, I don't know how long, but they bring up new signals. So now we also go to, we go to Cairns, we go to Darwin, we go to out and out back Australia as well so mm -hmm. it's quite quite a you know big uh, project and obviously you know, a great one um, you know that you know 35 or 37 years later we can still be uh, broadcasting in languages other than English um, mm -hmm. and obviously there's a lot of community stations now like the one in Adelaide and like in Brisbane and everywhere else in Australia that we've got a learning community um, you know this is a similar sort of thing I guess for Sydney okay and what would you say that the uh, purpose of the program is purpose of the program is, uh, to, I guess, inform. That's the number one priority, I guess, for us, is to inform in, in Slovenian. So we, our listeners, I guess, that are, you know, probably in that first generation that are older, would, you know, can hear something of their own in Slovenian, can hear all the messages from various government departments, or whether it be SBS or various news, they can hear what's going on at their homeland, and also what's going on in the community. That's, I guess, the most important thing as well. So they can hear what everyone else is doing around Australia, or within their own community, within Sydney or Melbourne or whatever's going on, that they, they're informed, that they know what's happening um, and, and they feel part of the community, regardless if whether they go to these clubs or churches or they or they see anybody Slovenian, if they need some information, I guess, you know, for us, they listen. You've mentioned uh, how SBS has uh, changed and expanded over the last couple of decades and how they're bringing, still bringing out new stations to rich outlying regions. Where do you see like um, SBS and the program in like ten years from now? Ooh, in ten years from now, not sure on that one. Um, we recently, in the last couple of years, have uh, moved over to digital radio as well. So we're obviously on digital radio. Mm -hmm. We have six channels on digital, which I think one and uh, one is AM, two is FM, another one is Pop Asia. They have some various, uh, you know, another one called SBS Chill. So those sorts of things are available, you know, on the digital radio on the web as well, live. Mm -hmm. Where our program is going to be in the next 10 years, that's a good question. Um, we need to make sure we have enough listeners, number one. Um, and number two, you know, with the census, that's, I guess, how they sort of work out which programs have so many hours and who gets what programs. And we're due, I think, for a new results of the, of the last census from last year, about May or June, and they're going to make some more decisions. Every five years, they reassess all the programs. We have 68 language groups, so they decide, okay, mm -hmm. do we have too many programs in a certain language, do we have too little, are there new languages that have happened in the last five years, which a lot of times is yes, do they need to have hours, then we have to cut someone else's hours, so they reorganise things as well at the same time. So this round I think will be okay, fingers crossed, the next round in five years, I don't know. I guess you know our main listening population is first generation, every day we're losing more and more people, mm -hmm. question is if we can get those second or third generations back into the listening. Regardless of whether it's on, you know, on the actual radio at eight o'clock in the morning, because obviously a Sunday morning's not the great time for everyone, but you can listen to it back online. You can get podcast. You know, if we can interact that way via the web, 
you know, we try and keep, I guess, a bit more of this going. So new, new media and new technology is probably the way for us to try and get that age group, I guess, a bit lower, to try and get a bit more uh, listenership you know, during the next 10 years. Thank you very much. And do you have any last little soundbite to offer us? Oh, gosh. Um, obviously, I just want to make sure that, you know, as you said before, a lot of people do listen to me and they have for the last you know, 10 or 12 years. Mm. Um, you know, we enjoy doing this. It's a lot of hard work and a lot of people don't probably realise how long it actually is to put a program together um, unless you're in this. But, you know, we enjoy it. If we didn't enjoy it, we wouldn't be doing it. Um, and we like interacting with people as well that be here in Sydney or in Melbourne or, you know, with around the country or around the world. You know, I mean, we have, you know, we have the privilege, I guess, of, of interviewing such guests as foreign ministers and presidents, you know, of Slovenia or, or Australia or politicians or whoever it is. Um, you know, so from that point of view, you sort of, you do get a bit of a buzz. You know, when I first joined, it was around the Olympics in Sydney. So I guess my first six months included the Olympics and to be there when you know they celebrated two gold medals that Slovenians had on the same night uh, was a really big thing for us. Um, you know, the next morning, we came home a little bit weary, but uh, the next morning, 8 o'clock, that was on. These guys were on our program. Um, we had interviews with them. We had the celebration. We had, we had out, you know, takes of everything. So that kind of thing, you know, you kind of realise how, how powerful media is, even radio. You don't have a picture, but the sound is, the, is powerful as well. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.